National Mag Lab presents Take Two Series Marker. Hi, Christiane. How you doing? I'm doing all right. How are you? Good. Good to see you. You too. So can you tell me a little bit about what you do here at the lab? Uh, my group grows thin films of frustrated magnets. Frustrated magnets. What's a frustrated magnet? It is a material with a, uh, magnetic atoms on a triangular lattice. Um, and because they're on that geometry, they're fixed to that geometry, they can't quite decide what, uh, how they want to order themselves at low temperatures. So we, um, we try to push it in different directions, play with the properties at low temperatures by growing it in thin film form, by applying magnetic field, uh, and by lowering the temperature. Oh, okay. So uh, something that would be non-frustrated would be something that has like a square shape or a different, like non-triangular shape? Exactly. So if atoms are on a square lattice, then they're fine. They can do uh, become what we call ferromagnetic, so all, all point in the same direction. Oh. But in, when it's a triangular lattice, they have no clue what to do. They cannot find what we call a ground state. And so we try to push it um, to find something to do at low temperature, and we try to manipulate that. Okay. So you, you said you use magnetic fields to do some of that testing, right? Mm -hmm. And like, what's the highest magnetic field that you you've used to test these? So, so far we've only used the millikelvin facility, which goes up to 18 Tesla, but we recently had some uh, nice magnet time where we found that 18 Tesla was not enough, and that was kind of unexpected um, for the thin films that we're measuring. So we're gonna definitely apply for some more time at higher fields in the next cycle to see what's going on there. So at the millikelvin facility, you can use high uh, magnetic fields and low temperatures, right? Yes, so we have a few materials um, that we measure there, and for some we need millikelvin temperatures and intermediate fields, and so like five tesla or so, and for others we need not so low temperatures, maybe only a few kelvin, but we need apparently, as we discovered recently, more than 18 tesla to figure out what's going on. So. Wow, 18 tesla, that's strong. Yep. Well, uh, I guess we're out of time, so thanks for sharing that with me. Thank you. Meglab presents Take Two Series. Marker. Good morning, Christiana. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? Pretty good. So can you tell me a little bit about your research? Certainly. Um, my group grows uh, thin films of magnetic materials, and we focus on materials that just don't, uh, are not able to decide what they want to be at uh, low temperatures, so we call that a degenerate ground state. So they're highly frustrated magnetic materials. Oh, okay. So are these like, I mean, wh what kind of materials are these made of? Are these heavier elements or are they lighter elements? That's a good question. Um, so they're mostly heavy elements, um, both rare, consisting of rare earth elements and transition uh, metals. And they're all oxides, essentially, so all insulating. And um, so we use the big magnets over here to explore their magnetic properties at extremely low temperatures. Okay, and does the dimensionality plays an important role in their properties? I in some sense it does, so that's one of the things we investigate. So we grow thin films because we want to take it down to essentially 2D um, regime and uh, understand how the physics changes in 2D. And also we're uh, growing it in thin film form to arrange the atomic positions uh, via apotextual strain. So we can actually tune the ground state of this material at low temperatures by changing those positions. So by uh, when you are changing the basically the strain, mm -hmm. it's you can do this also by application of pressure. Have Are people doing that or? That's a very interesting question. I'm very interested to pursue it. Um, uh, so we apply static strain just with the substrate of our choice. So we can grow it on different substrates and get different strain states. Uh -huh. But it will be very interesting to, on top of that, apply hydrostatic strain so we can squeeze the crystal further and see what happens when we essentially move the atoms closer together, much more closely together than we could in a just in a thin film alone. Yeah, so are there any applications, specific applications that you're looking for? So uh, magnetic thin films uh, are, um, there are obvious applications such as uh, maybe some data storage capabilities using um, 
the magnetic excitations essentially in this material as new types of information carriers. Fantastic. Thank you so much. If you want to learn more about Christiana's uh, research, please visit this website.